So for this tan stack start project I've been playing around with, I decided to pivot from a health tracking application to a e platform for learning, an e-learning platform. And basically, let me kind of demo what I have and you can check out the code if you want to. It's located at this URL I'll put it in the description. But you can log in as a user and once you've logged in, you can create a course. And so let's say you want to upload something about like I don't know, addition. Like let's say you want to teach addition, right? You can type in a, a, a course description over here, and I'll say like some course teaching uh, addition for kids. Type in some paragraph stuff, whatever. Let's do this. This is Markdown, and then down here we can do a category. We'll say math, and then we can also choose to upload a video. So let's just go here, and let's go to my desktop. Go to my movies. Select this one. It's like 10 megabytes, and I'll click create course. And this is actually going to upload a video. Um, I'll kind of walk you through what I have going on for the, the file uploading. I am using an S3 bucket with pre-signed URLs and pre-signed posts. So I think that would be a good thing to talk about in this video. But now that you have the course created, if you are a course admin, there's a certain amount of buttons that will show up. So like edit course, this will show up only if you are a course admin. And then you can also bookmark the course to have it show up in your dashboard. So over here we have addition that shows up. Then we can click it to go back. Again, this is all a work in progress and hopefully I'll actually finish this project and maybe even host my own courses on this. So you can come in here as an admin, you can edit any of this stuff. You can go back, um, but then also you can add sections. So like I'm calling it segments. I'm not sure if that's a good name for it, but let's add a segment and I'll call it uh, simple edition. You can again, add some mark down here if you want to, and then you can select a video for that segment. I'll go ahead and click upload and that should create the segment and now you'll go and you'll see all the sections that are in this course so i can continue adding different segments too go ahead and type in description let's just grab this one again and create the segment okay so now we have two segments we have the first segment and then we can go and finish this and go to the next one you can watch the videos you can maybe upload some course information or some uh, segment information about like I don't know, workshops. Something else I added in was the ability to upload files. So this is using React Drop Zone, which is another thing I could probably make a uh, little video about, but let's go to my desktop and find a sample PDF. And you'll notice that it uploaded a sample PDF to this application. And then as an admin, I can delete this if I want to. I'm gonna ask if I want to delete it, I'll say yes. Um, and that's, that's about it. I mean, we can delete the segment too. We can edit the segment. And overall, I mean, that's kind of like the essentials of what you need for an online co course platform. You have these different like videos, the different segments, and then you can edit the content of them. So let's talk about how some of this stuff works for the course documents. So how that's done is we have a file drop zone component. And if I were to look at that, you'll see here there's a use drop zone hook. So this is actually using something called React drop zone. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. You basically call this hook. You can give it some criteria about like what files you can accept in that drop drop zone area. What happens when a file is actually dropped into this? So in our case, we're just basically getting the first file that was dropped in and we set that on state somewhere. And then you basically just have to do a spread operator on the git root props that's returned from this hook and put it on any type of div. And that's gonna basically add a listener so that when someone drops a file or clicks it, they can select files. Um, same thing here, you have an input and you need to pass in git input props into the input that's inside of the div. And then you can do some styling. So like if the drag is active, which I believe comes from this as well. So these are like the three main props you'll need from use drop zone. And then you put it on your stuff and then you can simply like click and drag files into this or you can click it to select the file. It's pretty cool. Very easy to use and I, I recommend using it in your own application if you want to uh, enable users to upload files. So let's uh, take a step back and try to figure out what happens when they actually select a file. So if you go over here, we have a handle file select. And the way this is working is I'm uploading to an S3 bucket, which happens to be local. So if I look at my Docker compose file, you'll see that there is a service called S3 bucket. And all that's doing is spinning up a locally running S3 bucket. So I have this S3 MJS file that loads in an S3 server library it hosts something in port 9000 and then that basically emulates an s3 bucket locally 
so that I can actually upload files to it without having to connect to a real Amazon account. But when you deploy to production, I mean, you just have to basically point to a real bucket and your app will just work the same way as it did locally. Really cool if you want to, you know, do local uploads like this. By the way, leave a comment if there's another approach you guys like to use for like local S3 bucket mocks or stubs or whatever you want to call it. It just, it's one less thing to worry about getting the project um, running locally. And uh, it's nice to be able to run everything without having to actually set up AWS credentials. So how this is working is we have a generate random UN and then we call upload file. So what this is doing is it calls a can stack server action to get a pre-signed post URL. So let's look at this and see how this kind of works. So this is a server function. You verify that we are authenticated and we expect a key and a content type. Now I need to go back and tweak a little bit of how the authorization works because right now I think someone could just overwrite existing keys in my, my backend, not the best. I think I just need to change this up a little bit how it's working. But the idea is the same. You basically call this create pre-signed post method that comes from this AWS SDK S3 pre-signed post. You import this thing, you can pass it your S3 client, you tell it what bucket you want to upload to, you tell it what key you should allow the user to upload to. So technically you should probably like generate the UID here and then return the key so that the front end knows to use that key. But you know, we'll fix that later. You can also give it some conditions. So if you want like a max length of the file, I think right now it's up to 100 megabytes for my videos. Um, this is good because you don't want people uploading like gigabytes of files to your bucket without permission. Uh, you can also verify that the content type is a certain type. So for example, verify it's a PDF. Um, and then you can give an expiration. So like how the pre-signed post work is, it works is you get a URL and it lasts for about like five minutes or 10 minutes. And then the user has that time to be able to upload a file to that S3 bucket. And if they don't do it within that time, they will get authentication errors. But after you call this method on your backend, remember this is a server function. So it runs on the backend. You get a URL and some fields. So we basically return this information back to the front end and we get the pre-signed post here. So the next steps are on the front end. This is all running the front end. You make a form and you append a file on your form, but you also append all those fields that came back. Remember this method returns a bunch of uh, fields. You've already forgotten this is what it returns, fields. So you take all the fields that are returned here and you just append them to the form first. And the very last thing you append is your file, or I think you could potentially do multiple files if you want to. And then you just do a normal fetch request on that URL, okay? So this will basically take the form and post it to your S3 bucket save the file and at some point this should be done and then when the file is done i'm calling another method called upload attachment fn which is basically just creating an entry for that course or that segment of the course to associate the file that was uploaded to the actual uh, model so like if i go to my schema i am using drizzle and postgres and you'll see we have attachments here and this takes in a file key so after the client has successfully uploaded the attachment to the S3 bucket, we then have the client call this method with the file key. And that's how it's basically creating the attachment with the file key. Now again, there's different ways you could do this. You could actually on the S3 bucket itself, you could have a trigger so that when someone successfully creates a file, you could then have the trigger invoke like a Lambda function and that Lambda function could then create the attachment. Honestly, it's just a bunch of extra work. It's just sometimes easier just to do this all client side, although it may not be the most secure or the best approach. Um, this, it works pretty well, right? So again, we upload the file to the bucket and then we invoke our own API to create the attachment entry. And then we show a toast to the, the user saying that, Hey, everything has been successfully uploaded. And then I invalidate the router. This is going to cause and stack to basically refetch all the information that's in our loader. If I go to the loader up here. This is getting like the, the segment information. And so we basically say router.invalidate so that behind the scenes it's going to fetch the new information and then the UI should basically refresh with the new information here. Again, I recommend going and read through the code if you want a better example of how like the pre-signed post works or if like what I explained didn't really click in your head. It's, it's, it's not too difficult. So go check that out. That's basically how you do it in most applications if you want to have the ability for a user to upload directly to a bucket.
Now, the whole reason I made this project is I, you know, kept hearing that they're going to cut the Department of Education. And I'm like, hey, why not just have like an online platform that's free from advertisements, free from like a paywall. It's just free content that people can go to learn the various things. Um, I'm not sure if I'll follow through with this project all the way, but I figured, hey, I could at least use this for myself. Like if I wanted to make my own course platform behind a paywall, I could do that and I could come back in and add Stripe and have it so that every course has to be purchased individually. But we will see where I take this. I don't know. By the way, you guys are welcome to contribute to this if you want to. Um, again, I'm just doing this to learn more about TanStack and the TanStack router and all this stuff. And I figured, hey, what better way to learn than build something? Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good day. Happy coding.